Tonight, um, we're going to take you to San Marcos, Texas. Anybody uh, know where San Marcos, Texas is? It's north of, north of San Antonio. And uh, I'm going to call up Christopher Child. You want to come on up, Christopher? Give him a hand. Very good. Well, Christopher, thanks. Uh, yeah. We're we'll talk about uh, San Marcos and, and the nest. Uh, but before we do, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah so my name is Christopher Childs. Um, my background is in oil and gas. As you can see up there, I had 14 years. Uh, I went to Stephen F. Austin State University, uh, played college there. Um, uh, with oil and gas background, it was pretty neat. I got to do a lot of international travel for about two years. I traveled internationally every other month, and I went to uh, West Africa and Israel. So that was a really cool experience I got to do. After that, I changed companies, and I worked in downtown Houston, and I had a, about an hour commute from my house every single day, each way. So it was just brutal and grinding, and so I started looking at other options. Um, in 2012, you see there, I bought my first single-family house, teamed up with a couple buddies. We went in, and the three of us bought a house. We did everything ourselves. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing. It still ended up being a really successful deal. Don't do that. Every time you lift the hammer, you lose money. Yeah, yeah. So, and we didn't know what we were doing. Well, then I found Lifestyles. And, and so um, a f family friend of ours had mentioned it to me. I think he owned about 16 houses. So I went and did the, did the class, the two-day. I joined in 2016. I wanted to learn everything. So I started single family. I started passively. I bought three single family houses and three multifamily passive deals. And uh, fast forward to today, still in the three multifamily passive deals, and I'm a lead on four deals, total is 288 So Christopher, units. you started out uh, single family. Had, do you still have your single family houses? I've sold all the single family okay, houses. Okay, so you're out of those. And then before you became a lead investor, and we're gonna talk about your properties, uh, did you start out passively? In other words, <clears throat> investing in, uh, in, in other leads uh, deals? Yeah, good question. I did. I did three passive deals and I did that on purpose. I wanted to see what it was like from the passive side. I wanted to see the communication, the style, how deals are put together and you know just the, the whole life cycle sure. of one. <clears throat> okay, so you pretty well told us what, what brought you to lifestyles and all that. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the property in, in, in San Marcos. For those of you that, that don't know where San Marcos is, it's about, uh, oh, I would say what, 60 miles uh, north of, of, of San Antonio. It is a growing uh, community. One of the things somebody told me the other day, I, I didn't realize this, but you have Southwest Texas University there. Do you real, realize that the enrollment in Southwest Texas is now higher than Texas Tech is? That's how big that area is and how it's growing. And it's, would you mind go back one slide real quick? Yeah. I just want to share. So um, the biggest reason for me joining is my family and my future. They're here right now. My, my lovely wife, Lori, my five-year-old yep. son, yeah. Beckham. Yeah, so some, he's waving. And he's holding a sign there. You can't see it. We just recently did that. Expired. But it says, only child expiring 2022 in February. So we got, we got another boy coming. You can read so. it out in different ways. That, that's kind of scary, that side. What's that? That's kind of scary. <laughs> child hold that side. Okay. okay. Okay, so the actual deal, this is 104 units. It's in San Marcos, Texas. It was built in 1975. Uh, I purchased it just a couple years ago, July of 2019, for $8.45 million. And uh, the total raise was 3.825 million. That was operating capital, the initial down payment, the rehab budget, and reserves. So, Christopher, so what I want people to look at: 3.8 million dollars. That's a lot of money, right? That's just not one or two investors. That's several. So, how many investors did you have the, in the in, nest? In this one, there's 60. Okay, 60 so investors. there's 60 investors that make up this 3.8 million dollars. So it's not just a few people. There's a lot of opportunity for members to, to, to come into this deal. What was the smallest capital raise you had? Uh, so I always smallest. leave. Few, I leave a few spots for 25,000. So for if, you, if, if you got 25,000, you can get you can invest in the deal. Yeah, and then really quick though, because remember I have people watching nationally from all over the place. So. We're here talking about San Antonio deal in San Marcos, so you're th they're thinking it's just local people. Do you have people from all different walks of life in this deal and any out-of-state investors in your deal? I do, yeah, they're from all over. I have Michigan, I have California, I believe. In, so yeah, okay. from all, it's not just Texas, for sure. Okay, so I just want people to know that. It doesn't matter where you live, you know, and, and here's another question I always have. How many of your 60 investors came and actually walked your property? That Zero. Doesn't... Zero, so <laughs> who like, is that not passive is what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to actually go to the properties. You just right. collect your checks. 
so then the, the loan was 6.005 million. Of course, they had to add that extra little 5,000 in there. They felt bad for me, I guess. Um, the interest rate was 4.05. It was a variable rate interest rate. And so I'm at, the last few months, I've been at 1.8%. It, it's been a home run to go with the variable rate. So that's been really nice. Yeah. yeah. For, for those of you that, that may not be familiar with the term rehab budget, that's capital that, that, that was raised to do all the, the, the capital improvements, you know, whether it was interior upgrades, whether it was exterior plans that you had, that was the money that went into the property for all those repairs. And we'll look at some of that here in a minute. So tell us a little bit about, you know, for 2021, what your projected income and what your expenses look like. Yeah, so we, we really started hitting our stride end of 2020, Q4 2020, and then through 21, we're doing really well. Um, monthly income is hovering just over 100 right now. That was my short-term goal, trying to push it up to 110. Um, expenses has been pr pretty in line at 50K. That's what we had projected. So having really good NOI right now, cash on cash return, um, currently today is a 7.5% return that we're, we're getting off of our monthly um, income minus expenses. Yeah, and here in a moment, we'll, we'll show you. you. You bought the property. It was uh, uh, 81 a door. It was uh, right at? 8.45 million 8, was the purchase price. If you can see the current valuation, it's at 12.5 million. And we'll show you in year three what it's projected at closer to 13 million. Mm -hmm. So a substantial equity capture in just two short years on this, on the property. There we go. Okay, so there let's we go. look at some of the before and after, some of the work that you did on the property. Yeah, so th these are my favorite ones to share because th this is what I absolutely love. When I went on to my first property, it was a small deal in Victoria and I did a large rehab budget there. We added all kinds of things. So it's, it's part of what I love when we come in and do these. And so if you notice there, um, well, I think we missed a slide. Can, can you go back one more real quick? Yeah, there we okay. go. Yeah, so um, this is the center section of the property. There, it was. It, I called it amenity row already. There was a lot of amenities that were there that were in place from previous ownership. It looked really nice, but there was some room for improvement on those, but I wanted to add some. And so if you see there, it's kind of a, a bad before picture. I didn't have a good way to show it, but that's an open middle section of the property. And on the back side over by, behind the tree is where the, we added the playground set. And then uh, by the curb right there in the front is where we added this whole outdoor um, grill, kitchen area, covered pergola. It's really nice and, and are nice there a laundry. lot of kids at the, uh, on the, on there the property? There are. Yeah, this is a very family-friendly property. Okay. Yeah. Did you install a dog park? On uh, the, property? the dog park was already there. I, okay. I improved it, though. <laughs> it had high grass that was coming up this time. Okay. Well, let's look at <laughs> Let's look at some others. Okay, so the pool, the pool was nice. It was a good shape, but there just wasn't a whole lot there to it. So I always like to come in and add a little pop. So I chose yellow as my accent color. We did all new pool furniture, the nice yellow. We added those tables there. And then out, the leasing office is right in front of it. And we added the, the landscaping there right there to just kind of make it pop and look a lot nicer. Looks better, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so I'm sorry. yeah, the, the leasing office was really nice already as is. Um, the, the ownership did a really good job, so there wasn't a whole lot to do there, but there was a lot of unused space that, there in the corner, so we just added a nice little lounge area, some furniture. Um, so yeah, the, the leasing office is really nice. And then here's some interior picks. So the one on the before picture is actually one of the nicer interiors. There were some that were a lot more rough. Um, a lot of them had the white appliances. We've gone in and added all black appliances in all of our deals. And then if you see there, the flooring, uh, we added this nice new kind of gray vinyl plank. It really pops and shows when we're sh showing and touring these properties. And Looks like you also added some backsplashes. The backsplash has been it. That, that was a big key in, uh, factor here. And we've experienced really high rental growth, far exceeding you my know, My experience projections. has been that is not a, a major investment, but mm -hmm. it sure <clears throat> brings in additional rent. Just that extra little jewel by adding that mm -hmm. can go a long ways with residents on, on, on raising right. rent. It, it does, for sure. All right, yeah, and here's the cool part. So like I said, I called it amenity row. It literally, you drive into the, the, the property, there's a dog park, then there's a basketball court, behind it is a soccer field. And then it goes into the, the playground that I added, the outdoor kitchen. There's a hammock area. It's just really cool. But a lot of it was worn down. So like, for example, here, the hammocks, were the, they were all old and falling apart. So I came in here and added. Did, did you want Bernie Sanders supporters? Is that why you got hammocks? 
<laughs> no, I just chose yellow as the accent color for here. So we did it with the soccer field and the hammocks there. The soccer field, it was nice turf, but it had a whole rip down the entire middle section of it, showing the concrete like a trip hazard. The edges were all ripped, so we replaced all that, made it look really nice. And it, it, I, I, pl I played soccer growing up, so <laughs> it's a cool part. But for it's me. not a full size; it's a, it, just a small it, area it's where it's the a small, kids can come in. Right? Yeah, it's a small and area. And folks, if you're new, you're like, why is he adding all this extra stuff? Do you get more rent for it? No, but what you get is retention. The biggest thing we have in our enemy in this industry is turnover. Yeah. In the industry, it's about 50%. He'll knock it down lower because we learned it's the same thing in marriage. What's the most important rule in marriage? It's cheaper to keep her. In other words, <laughs> you don't want people moving out, but if they have all these amenities, they're like, this is like a place, great place for my family, they stay longer. Well, I will tell you, I don't know if there's another apartment complex where I have a soccer field. Yeah. Never. Yeah, I, think yeah. you, I think you own it. You got the one with a soccer I'm, field. I might. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here, here we are into some numbers. Um, you, you see where we are year one, year two, and year three, and the increases that we had. The big increases is coming in from the income. So Okay, the so the thing I want to point out here on this one is unlike single family, multifamily it, income, it's a business. Your property is evaluated off of your net operating income. When your net operating income grows, the more valuable that your property is. So if you look at his net operating in year one, it's gone from 406,000 to close to 650,000. And, and you can see the progression of, of the cash on cash. But what's really gonna be important in a moment is not only the cash on cash, but what the potential equity capture was if, if they sold the, this property. And we're gonna take a look at that. And there's, there's one more thing I want, I want to point out here is most of the time you think people buying apartments, what are they trying to do? Cut their expenses? But you know something weird? His expenses are going up every single year. Now, why do they go up? You want to explain that? Sure. I mean, uh, taxes, uh, the increase there, um, that's, that's the biggest one. <laughs> well, the, the, the other thing is, is that we don't cut back on repair and maintenance. All right. We, we want to make sure that we have a good product. We go in and we, we, we turn these units. You saw what he's doing, the, the, the backsplashes, the, 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 new, the new flooring, you know, having it completely repainted, everything, possibly new appliances. We continue to make that investment in the property. We have something what's called capital reserves. We're spending that money. We're putting it back into the property every month to maintain so we can have these higher operating incomes. So we want to achieve higher income but you also have to have the expense to go. to. So remember, that. the first year he's not making a big return. Why? Because you have existing renters at the lower rents. So it takes a full year to transition them over to the nicer, higher rents and the newer units. So that's where you see the first year. It's a growth year. Yeah. All right. So what I'd like to do is just kind of give you a hype. Let's do a, a hypothetical here. All right. He bought the property. He's in year two right now. You can see where the operating income has gone from 406000 to, to 622000 The property is worth 12.5. You bought it at 8.4 right now. Here's, here's what I wanna, want you to look at. Year three projected is 650000 So what happens? The property now is worth $13 million. Let's say we're going to sell the property. All right? Property value, we sell it for $13 million. What do we have to do? We have to pay off our debt. Remember, we, loaned, we, we borrowed money for $6 million. We got to pay that back. What's the next thing? We have to return the investors' money that they put in it. Remember, how much money did they raise? $3.825 million. That money is going to come back to you, that $3.8 million. What happened over the last three years in terms of cash on cash? How much money did, were the investors potentially projected to pay over three years? $607,000. So if you take that $13 million in property value, you subtract out the debt that has to be uh, paid back, you return the investor's capital, you add back in the distribution. When all the dust settles, $3.7 million gain they invested 3.8 million. All that money's been paid back. There's an additional 3.7 million. That's a 90, what, 98, 99% return on your investment after three years. 
I think I would be happy with that. And Christopher, I know all your investors will be. For sure. That's yeah. a fantastic <laughs> yeah. return. Now, Christopher, one thing we got to explain, because there's a bunch of new folks here. You're out there at the property. You're running the property. You're working with all these crews doing all this work. What are your investors doing during this period? Can you explain to the new people what they are involved in this? They have a really big role. Uh, they read my monthly report every month that I send out. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it, isn't it nice to know that it, as an investor, you invest in this property, that every month you're going to get a narrative. Everything that's going on on the property, what type of things that they're doing, you're going to get uh, P&L statements, uh, profit loss statements, where you can actually look, see the progression of the property. So you're following along with all the activities every month. And then, oh, by the way, maybe there's a, a transfer into your bank account at the end of the quarter on a 7.5% return to go along with it to make it even a little nicer, right? And, and how much tax are they paying on that distribution check? The taxes? Well, I did a cost segregation study uh, right out the gate. So, so was that's even better. I know you guys don't know what that is. That's accelerated depreciation. But not only are they not paying taxes, they're losing money in the IRS eyes, which they can write off against their own taxes. God bless America. Is that not cool? So I'll teach you that this weekend. Very good. I know that sounds like Greek to everybody new, but I break it down to a third grade level so even the Aggies in the room can understand it. Yeah, but I mean, hey, this this is a this is a great story. I, I mean, it really is uh, to have that much cash on cash after potentially three years, and and have all your money returned plus another close to one hundred percent is fantastic. You've done a nice job on Thank that. Thank you very Christopher. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so just tell us a little bit about how all this happened. I mean, yeah. how did, how did it work out for you? I mean, what. What was the, the magic potion? Yeah, the, the magic potion was the income. You saw that. So our expenses stayed pretty lined out. Um, I'm a very conservative person, so I underwrite conservatively. And, you know, I always want to uh, exceed the expectations. So on the income, I had originally projected just a 3% increase on, on all the different unit types. And we are achieving anywhere between 20 to 25% rental increases today from where they were. So uh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and I, I will tell you, San Marcos is a thriving area. It's in a great location. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you say, do you have students on the property? Uh, I try to maintain 10% or less. Uh, it's more of a family oriented. We added the playground. There's the soccer field, those type things. So um, the in income was the biggest one. I'm, I'm also huge on community events. Uh, whenever I take over a property, I like to have monthly things that we do. Like for example, it's October. So we're doing a door decorating contest right now out at this property and do prizes to the top three. We host events in the, the leasing office all the time, hand out donuts, you know, just those type things. It really brings the community better. It helps with re retention as well. So that's a yeah, big thing that I Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's very important. Uh, turnover in, in the industry, you know, average can be, you know, as high as 50%. And you want to, what happens, you have to make investments. You have to turn units. So you want to make the investment in retention. You want to have these type of, of, of monthly events like you talk about, whether it's whether it's uh, around Halloween, whether it's around Thanksgiving, you know, whether it's Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. all these are key times where you, you can do certain events. You know, Fourth of July, have hot dog parties, you know, to have have people come by when you know and do that. So all these things are important. Okay. Uh, how, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, how has it changed my life? I mean, I, I would, I'm just going to immediately move to the last bullet because that, that's really the one right there. Um, it just, uh, my wife and I recently moved from Houston, Texas. We both have now retired from corporate America. We were, had, yeah, Good for you. you. Thank you. And so, we got, so to we got to choose where we wanted to live. We chose New Braunfels, Texas, and we absolutely love it. We've moved in May, and it's been a great change for well, us. Well, I think that's the best part of the whole slide is getting out of Houston to come to God's country in New Braunfels. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, that's where I live too, all right? That's, that's the decision I made. Right. So. But it's just changed my life because I had the grind. I had the hour commute. I had a young son. I was barely able to see him. I, by the time I got home, we, we'd be able to do dinner, bath, and he'd go to bed. And just at that time, I just said that this, this is not the decision for me. This is not the route I want to go. And we got a second one on the way now. So it's going to be a total different game changer for the second one. But we're both at the house. We can control our time and be there with our kids. So. A second tax deduction? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I know you got a, a lot of things that you're going to be doing in the future. I know you're going to continue to look for uh, opportunities. So tell us just briefly about what kind of is on the horizon for you short term and long term. Yeah. So short term, you see there, uh, provide returns to my investors. That's a big thing for me. I take a lot of pride in that. My wife and I work really hard every single month. We send out the communications, sometimes more if it needs to be. But we spend a lot of time on it. We're, we believe in the communication and keeping everybody updated. Um, so the short term, I want to acquire a 200 unit plus deal and uh, to get, push over 500. Long term, want to get over 1,000. And uh, I have personal financial goals, the monthly income that I want to achieve. I have a short, a middle, and a long term that um, I'm going to try to hit. And then ultimately, long, long down the road, I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of uh, motivation right now. So there's a lot I want to achieve. But down the road, ultimately, want to be in you know a lot of passive deals and just having that passive you, income. You know what I like about this? He, he's going to work his tail off on everything he's going to do here, get to a thousand units, and then he's going to finally take a, a breath and say, you know what, I'm going to do everything like you guys are. I'm going to passive invest and, and do that because that truly is where the lifestyle is. And even though I'm a lead investor and do it, I have a lot of passive investments that it's just, it's nice to be able to invest with people and, and, and do it. Yeah, that there, there's a point where we're all ambitious. We're all go-getters. But there's a point where like, I don't even want to do reports anymore. I just want that check. Who's in that position already? Yeah, yeah and that's okay. You figure out what is the right path for you. There's so many different things. If you come to my seminar this weekend, I'll explain all the different paths so you can choose the right one for you. Yeah. And what's cool is when you join, you never know what's going to happen. I, I made a friend out of the Houston. He's a lead investor. He just purchased a deal in Nacogdoches, Texas, and it's a property that I used to party in when I was in college. And so I was like, I have to invest. <laughs> and so I invested in it. Too. Did, did you go visit your old... Uh, you know, college. I, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> was there any people on the way that uh, worked with you or helped you out? Oh, yeah, tons. So first of all, one is right here, Mr. Doug Crummel, um, also Robert Hale. They're both the Central Texas mentors. They were they were a huge help for me throughout this entire process. Um, Robert was actually on site with me when we did the, the due diligence. Um, Lifestyles Realty team, they're the ones that had this deal and worked with me on it throughout it. And then a huge, huge thank you, Lifestyles Consultant. Where is she? Where is she? There she is, Teresa Harrell. If it wasn't for her, this deal literally would have not closed. And I'm very serious about it. She's amazing. Please give her a round All of applause. Right, Teresa. So, yeah, she, she was so huge for this. I can't, I can't thank her enough, so thank you. Um, uh, John Logan uh, for insurance. I used uh, the Trowbridge Law Group for my uh, the SEC PPM side of it. Um, all of the investors that invested in this, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Could have not done it without you. We have a small crowd tonight, but is any of your investors in the room tonight? I saw one out. Anybody in there? We have one. Oh, see, yeah. they're, they're in the back row with the yeah. 420 crowd. You could have hung up here where he... I was going to say there's several of his investors online, too. Oh, yeah. online. oh, good. Yeah. And then I do want to thank my wife and, and my son. Yay, wife and son. Yay, very good. So, Christopher, you up for a few questions? Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we want to start with some here in the room. Anybody? Okay. Who does the management on this property? Uh, that's a really good question. And so I, I'm at four properties now. I just recently stepped away end of last year uh, from corporate America. But when I started, I had a full-time job. And so I had a third-party property management company that I used on the first two. And then the most two recent acquisitions here in Central Texas, I have another one. And I've been so thankful to be teamed up with them. They do a fantastic job. So I work with a third-party property management company. You acquired this property when there are tenants already in there. So how were you able to kind of rehab each of the units, do the backsplashes, the floors, the Great whole question. nine yards? Yeah, that's a, that is a really good question. So we go through on due diligence. We do unit walks. We walk through and we check all 104 units. We take notes. We see what we want to what we want to do. We have a plan of what we're going to do for the interior upgrades. The ones that are vacant, we can obviously do right away. And then the other ones, and you see there too, um, as, as he said earlier, that it goes through the first year, there wasn't a, a lot of improvements because as the units turn, we, we make the improvements, we do them at the higher rents like that as it goes on. So it's a, as they turn. So it's a stagger have, over time. Right. And then we'll teach you there's a certain way, like if all the le leases are expired, we don't do every by a 12 month lease because we have to stagger it over the months so they're not all due. So there's a whole science and that's where our operation consultant comes in. Yeah. We teach that. Great question though. I was checking to see if I had any questions right online here. Uh, here. We've got one more right here. Are you 100% leased now, or do you have a waiting list? We're, we're trending into this month 95% right now. 
Oh, so. by the way, if you're new, Teresa, do we ever want to be 100% full? No. Do you know why? That means you're not pushing your rents enough. We should always have that buffer. We always push it just a little bit more. So because we're evil capitalists, we want to make more money for investors. Is that okay? How do you thank your renters every single year? You raise their rents. Everybody remember that? Great question. But so, like, as David mentioned earlier, though, best product, best price. We raise the yep. rents, but, but you know, I have these great amenities. We have the community events. We try to give the best product to achieve those So you rent. think about it. If you look at all the other ones, they're all drum and humdrum from the 80s and 70s, no upgrades. His place is beautiful with all those extra amenities. Do you think people are going to go there first? Absolutely. People will pay for a good quality product. And so what, what Christopher does is his staff is actually doing uh, surveys. They're going by on competitive properties, yep. seeing what they look like. How much rent are they charging? Uh, are, are my units similar? You know, what type of amenity? What, how can I increase my rent or do more things? So that's how he's able to increase rents is knowing what his competition yeah, is Yeah, what doing. we'll teach you this Sunday is something called a market survey, how we go to all the competition. We look for like product, superior, yeah. inferior, so we know what we can do in that market. One way over there. Sorry, we have some online questions. Okay. Too, so okay. we'll do one more. All right. Then we'll do one more. Question? Question? Who had a question? All the way over there. We want you to run 100 million meters. <laughs> when you did the PPM, did you give them an exit date or strategy? Great yeah, question. Uh, yeah, great question. So there's a PPM, and then I also put together what's called the investment summary, which is my personal business plan. And so that's sent out, and that is specified as far as the total hold of the project. And I had projected three to seven years. It's obviously just a projection. Things can change uh, with the market. But three to seven years, and then I ultimately project out also the return. So for the new people, that sounded like Greek. You have no clue what it means. Basically, what it is is just so you know, I'm going to break all this down this weekend of what that means. But anytime we make get into a deal here at Lifestyles, you know the strategy, you know the expected rate of returns. Is it a one-year hold, a three-year hold, a five-year hold? Is it a fixer-upper? Is it not a fixer-upper? All that will be in there. All his past deals, all that, his lead, his background, his experience will all be in there before you make that decision. But we'll go through that over the weekend. Just a quick follow-up. Um, and how do you determine, if you're, if you're going a three- to seven-year hold, what's the determining factor for when you exit? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, whenever I'm looking at deals and for the exit strategy, I, I always look at the exit and I look at what the annualized return is going to be and when it makes the most sense and when you're going to get the highest return, whether it's your three, four, five, six, or seven. And then also if that compares to a refinance or a sale. So yeah, I, I do all those. Yeah, we have one person but, charged a lead investor. However, yeah, yeah. all of his investors have voting rights. So for him to exit that strategy, he needs a vote by 65%. We have a lot of protections in there for our investors. I can't go through all that tonight, but we teach that in the seminar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like 100% decision. You guys have no say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're very different lifestyles from the outside world syndicators. We have a maximum uh, compensation they're allowed to take. It's not like waterfall effects or or you get a preferred rate, and then they keep the rest. Not at lifestyles. None of that yeah, happens. I, as long as you know, there's no controlling operating interest or anything like that. So right. if you don't like the color of the doors and they're red, you can't mandate they be painted <laughs> blue or anything like that. So okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, you'd be surprised. Some do. I'm you a know, blue door I mean, guy, by the way. I like blue doors. Yeah. You're right. I'm a red door. Red door. Track better women that way. Okay. <laughs> Uh, online questions? Yep. What do we do with it? Here, what do you need? Well, we had another one, but we lost it. No, I gave one Oh, okay. I'll give you mine. Here. This one's more of a question. Um, Lucretia is asking, is this property a class B or class C property? Good question. I, I would say it's a high class C. So when we took over, it's probably mid class C. We, with the changes that we made, it's a high class C. Yeah, but the it, property it, was built in uh, what, 75? Mid, mid 70s, 75. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say it's a, it's a high C plus, may, maybe B, just because of the condition of the property. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's actually the only question I have that wasn't oh, okay. answered. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. Well, well, uh, okay. well what great. What advice would you give to new people? Because um, in the multifaceted, I had all single-family advice, but now that you went to multifaceted, maybe your first passive, 
making a big decision or what, what could you share some insight? Well, I mean, just my story alone, I went all in. I took out all my 401k. We joined Lifestyles. It was a great move. Um, I stepped away from my job. It was very difficult. My wife and I both made six figures in oil and gas. We were treated well. It was a very hard decision, but I stepped away last year, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Hey, we're, can I ask you a question? It's a little personal if you want sir? to share this. Your net worth from the time you joined till now, did it double, triple? How did you do so far? That, oh. that, because that's <clears> relative to whatever they have, whether they have 50 grand, a million, or whatever. Did it double, or how do you get things that went up? Yeah, it's gone up significantly. I honestly don't even know what it was when I joined because I wasn't really tracking. You know, I took the two-day class, and it was just light bulbs going off left and right, and I just knew that this was the path for me. And now I know, and I'm, I'm very, you know, educated, and I keep track of everything. And we're now accredited investors, you know, after joining so Lifestyles. So, in other words, so. his net worth went up over a million. Give a hand. Yeah, so, so it's important to know that if you're passive investing, our, our lead investors go through a very comprehensive training. They have to be certified. You just can't raise your hand and say, hey, I want to be a lead investor. So they go through a, a lot of training to be able to be in that position because it is a full-time job. You're, you're, you're there working. Now, you may not be at the property every day, but you have a, a, a big responsibility right. that, that, that you have. So. Yeah, just to give you an idea, our certified lead investors – have to take, I think it's 35 or 34 different tests. You must pass every single test 100%. Can't get any questions wrong. We have to retake it. And the questions are not asked the same way. Who likes we do it that way? Yeah. And even though I teach all the classes and Doug teaches classes, we're not exempt. We must recertify every year as well. That's right. Does that make sense? So I want you all to understand that. Christopher, uh, thank you. We, we appreciate that. Giving back like yeah. you have. I mean, to, to come here and tell his story. Uh, these are volunteers. They're volunteering their time to share their story for those of you that, that are looking and considering lifestyle. So you, you get to hear it firsthand. It's a complete volunteer. So yeah. thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. And uh, we'll look forward to having you back up here again yeah. soon. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you.